So what I am uh, going to look at in this session is, uh, let's just get our buttons working here again, there we go, is to have a look at the pipes component of Civil 3D, mostly from, an, well, yeah, almost completely from a new user's perspective, as there are a number of um, users who haven't even looked at the pipes yet. Um, so the plan for uh, today's session is to go and um, look at, first of all, just laying out the pipes, uh, pipes and sumps. <coughs> this is a, a gravity um, system by default for laying out gravity pipes, such as stormwater and, and sewer. Um, but it can be adapted somewhat um, to laying out uh, pressure pipes as well. Um, just by removing the, uh, the actual structures out of the system and just working with pipes only. Um, we're going to then generate a, a profile through the uh, pipes we've made uh, and plot that and show you how, how we can do that using the Australian New Zealand Country Kit. Um, then edits to the, the pipe network that you've made and what you can do for the using the class clash detection tools with uh, other pipes that might be crossing your network, etc. Then right at the end, um, we'll have a very, very quick look at um, well, what, what you need to do to export to the Autodesk Storm and Sanitary Analysis, the new analysis package that's available by download from the subscription centre. Um, we're not planning to look at that in any great detail, just basically show you how to get to it um, at the end of the session. Next week we have scheduled on Thursday a better look at the um, at SSA or, or the uh, Storm and Sanitary Analysis Package, um, just the basics, just to get started, we've only got an hour session, um, but um, it'll at least give you an idea of what you're looking at there. So. Um, Apologies if you have tuned into today's webcast and hoping to see a lot of that. Um, we're going to be doing that next week on Thursday. So um, that's the basic plan, to just to, to do a quick run through today of the pipes for new users and then we'll look at the SSA next week. All right. So let's go and have a look, eh? Let's have a look. And bring up Civil 3D. Okay, we're using 2011 Civil 3D, of course, here. Just let your screens catch up. Um, apologies if I have to um, clear my throat. Throat. I've got a bit of a cold <coughs> over the last little while. And um, we'll just see how we go today. We're broadcasting today from Nelson, which is overcast and raining. And if there's a lightning strike, the, the old uh, internet might go out for a few moments. So just bear with me. It'll, connect itself back up again later on. Um, as long as it doesn't hit my computer, we'll be sweet. Okay. All right, you should all now have the familiar um, Civil 3D screen up in front of you there now. What I uh, am going to do is just go and use the Insert tab here and insert Land XML, one of Sean's favourites, and one that I've modified a little bit. I'll just bring in some uh, a surface and a bunch of alignments. And let me just change the contours a little bit. So I've got a style that doesn't have quite so many contours on it. Clean it up a bit. Okay. So we're going to have a look at this thing in 3D and we'll just see what we're dealing with. Okay, you should be getting that up on screen in a moment. <coughs> what we have in the centre of the screen here is a bit of a gully. And right up the top of the screen there, there is a, I've modelled a bit of a, a roadway surface in there as well, a bit of a rough roadway surface, but uh, it'll do for demonstration purposes. Um, so what we're going to do is just place some um, sumps and uh, manholes take the drainage off that uh, off that roadway and we're going to discharge down into this uh, this little gully in the center okay that being done 
we've had a look at that. Let's go and show you the tools. <coughs> uh, what I might just do is actually turn on the triangulation on the surface so you can see a little bit better what we're doing. I'll change that style again. Oops. Sorry, change the surface properties. We'll get it from up in the ribbon here, which is I'm trying to teach myself to use the ribbon a bit more. There we go. And go and make it just triangles. Some grey triangles there for the surface. And you can see a bit better that road that's made up in the northern corner. Or the northern uh, quadrant. Okay. First thing you probably want to think about doing, and I'll just change the scale here for a moment. There we go. Make the text a bit smaller. <coughs> If you've not used the um, Australian New Zealand Country Kits uh, pipes before, the first thing you need to do is go and set it so it's looking at the ANZ pipes catalogue that's been built. Um, so you come up here on the Home tab of the ribbon under Create Design, and then Set Pipe Network Catalogue on the drop down. Just let the screens catch up there so you can see what I'm talking about. There. Okay, you just need to do this the first time you go through. First time you use the pipes. After this, it'll always um, Civil 3D will always look at that location until you tell it otherwise. So you need to set the pipe network catalog. Now the folder will be correct, but what you'll probably find is that when you start off, you'll have metric pipe catalog and metric structure catalog uh, in these two little drop downs below. There's pipe catalog and structure catalog. What you need to do is change that to ANZ metric pipe catalog and ANZ metric structure catalog. That being done, you go OK, and it just tells it to look in the right place. So it's it's part of the country countrification that was done with the country kit, um, but that part needs to be manually set, and after that you sweep. OK, um, you'll see in a moment what that. Uh, what that brings into your drawing or into your Civil 3D for you. Okay, we're now ready to basically go and start laying out these pipes. So back on the Home tab in the Create Design panel we've got Pipe Network and we simply hit the Pipe Network Creation Tools just from the drop down. Click on that. Give the pipe network a name such as Storm 1, Stormwater 1. We want to have down here the ANZ parts list, Australian New Zealand parts list. You've only got that or standard as the options, or if you're using our template, you, you have that. Um, you need to use that um, in conjunction with the ANZ uh, pipes catalogue, which we've just set. Um, the two of those work together, and then it gives you all the pipes. Um, that we've generated for you. You need to give it a surface to work with. Basically when you put in a, uh, all the pipes and the structures, it references that surface and the top of the structures um, go up to that surface and it also does things like looks at um, the depths, the amount of cover that the pipes have got, etc. when it places them in initially. So we need to set that to your existing ground or that's your design surface if you have one. The alignment name, well, we don't have an alignment, we're going to generate one later on, so we'll just leave that as it is. And then any label styles you want to apply as we go through. So I'm going to just make that ANZ pit name and ANZ pipe name, just the basic name um, tabs or labels on those, and go OK. That being done, you've given it its, its name and its defaults. You then come up with a little the little pipe layout toolbar. Okay, so basically on the command line it's saying specify the structure insertion point. <coughs> now, to have a look at the ANZ catalog that's been put together, from these drop downs you can specify the structure, or the manhole, or the sump that you you might be uh, you're wanting to place. Uh, and from the next drop down you can specify the, all the different uh, pipes that you want to use. If we're going to expand out the concrete manholes here, you can see we've got a whole bunch of, diff of, uh, of sizes there that correspond to the um, 
common sizes in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, for instance, I'm going to select the 1050 diameter concrete manhole here. These are all the things that have been built into the um, into the country kit. So in that pipes catalog that we set, if you don't have that set, you basically get um, well, you get very little in here. In fact, you might get a null structure, and the rest is all blank. Um, so if you see that happening, you just need to go back and set the uh, the pipe catalog. Um, so I'm going to choose that. Um, well, we can see from that drop down there, we've actually got concrete sumps, we've got a bunch of common concrete sump sizes, and we've also got concrete wing walls down there, uh, just common Australian New Zealand sizes in there too. Okay, so what I'm going to stick with my 1050 concrete manhole at the moment, and we've got um, a whole bunch of uh, pipes here at the moment, these are the ANZ concrete uh, reinforced concrete uh, rubbering jointed pipes, RCRRJ. I uh, can close that group and we've got different um, flange jointed pipes, um, all different sizes of those. We've got PVC pipes, different PN ratings depending on which one you select. Now all of these have been um, very carefully sized so that when you select the uh, nominal bore size, What's actually going into your model is the uh, a, a, a pipe size that's millimetre accurate or as close as possible so we could get to um, to the catalogue sizes we have, <coughs> well, the, the common uh, catalogue size in Australia and New Zealand, um, so that when you export these pipes for analysis purposes, you're going to get the internal diameter um, very close, or if not exactly. Um, what it should be, uh, making your, your calculations more accurate, and also the wall thicknesses uh, are um, correct as well, so that they show up correctly represented uh, as models in Civil 3D, uh, in terms of the outside clearance, and the pipe clearance to other pipes, etc. So uh, I'm going to choose to start off with here, uh, 225, start with our smallest um, pipe size, and we'll, we'll work up. 225 nominal bore rubbering jointed pipe. <coughs> and then moving further along to the right on the on the toolbar, we have some options here. We can draw pipes and structures at the same time. We can draw pipes only or structures only. Uh, pipes and structures is more usual, and you can use the others when you need to. The next icon you've got is whether you're drawing these pipes from upslope to downslope, or top to bottom, or if I click on that, little arrow changes showing me that it's expecting me to draw it from the bottom to the top, um, whichever you prefer, um, whichever direction you prefer doing it, most people do it from the top down I think when they're actually laying them out. Um, the, um, the point of that is that it, it's got a set of rules um, that it has a first go at putting these pipes in for you and getting the, the direction of the slope right etc um, as it lays them out and then you can adjust later on. Okay, so we're going to click on this icon here that says draw pipes and structures, and click on that, and it's asking for the um, structure insertion point. Just turn my snaps off there, so we might have a um, manhole here for instance, in the middle of the, um, the wheel track, another one here for going around the corner, and you can see as we're going out, stretching a pipe in between the two, the pipe that we have specified. Um, in the, um, the drop down at the top, or whatever type of pipe we want. Uh, let's put another manhole, say, here. So I'm just laying out my manholes at the moment. moment. I'll put some sumps in them in a second. Um, okay, let's go and drop one in here. Move on down this road a little bit. Manhole there, for instance. It doesn't matter if you don't get these quite in the right place to begin with, you can move them after the fact. And um, I'll pop another one in there, and then down to, well, let's try, oh, well, I should point out, if I come back up, at the moment I've been just laying out 225 pipes, <coughs> if I want to change the diameter of that pipe, for instance, that last one, change, go and select a, I don't know, a 525 nominal bore or something like that, 
um, and then change the also the structure. So I'm wanting to go for a wing wall here. Let's go for a. We'll see how the series 900 wing wall fits on there. And when I lay that out now and click on about, well, let's go down into our gully here somewhere. And hit the enter button, finish just laying those out. And you can see that it, on the fly, if you, if you adjust those uh, drop downs from the, uh, from the um, toolbar, on the fly it'll just change those sizes and insert the sizes you've specified. So we've got our 550 pipe there and we've got our little um, man, uh, sorry, wing wall down the bottom. These little blue circles are just our uh, labels, if I don't want that I can move it out the way. I just put some little leader on it. <laughs> okay, just let your screens catch up a little bit there. Okay, I think you're seeing the same as me now. Alright, so we've changed one of those pipes, but obviously we've got pipes we've already laid out here um, that we want to change the size of. It's, it's only 225 and probably this far down the road we want to change it to something else. So I can just select it on screen. And from the ribbon or from a right click you can just go swap part. Then comes up with the uh, the pipe catalog again, and I can bump that one up to a 525 as well. Go OK, and immediately that, that size increases on screen. And I can make the one previous to that, say that one there. Let's do a 5 two, Oops, don't want to do it from there. I want to right click. We'll go up to the ribbon, swap part, um, and we'll make that, I don't know, 375 or something like that, etc, etc. Make that one 375. So ideally you'd, you'd uh, change that in the drop down as you, you lay it out, but I uh, um, jumped a couple of steps ahead of myself there. So you can right click swap part if you don't want to go to the ribbon. And make that a 375 as well. Go okay. All right. So that's our, our basic pipe run down the middle of the road. Now we want a few uh, manholes in there, so I'm going to change. Sorry, not manholes. We want uh, sumps, don't we? So we can close down the manholes there in the structures and open up the sumps. And let's go for a max pit. <coughs> and we'll put pipes connecting that. Those pits will be say two two five as well. And then we we'll click on draw pipes and structures, and we can have a manhole, say for instance, here on the side of the road. And what we want to do is drag out our little um, pipe here, which moves around with our cursor, and it's wanting to know where we want to connect it to. When we bring it close to one of our structures, we get a little orange glyph, which looks like a well, a circle over the top of a cross. What that is is pipes. And it's a little symbol representing pipes drawing and connecting into a manhole. When you get that little glyph, um, you don't need to object snap to your structure. As soon as you can see that glyph and you hit the, uh, the uh, mouse click, it connects directly into that structure. Okay, and hit escape or enter, and it will um, stop drawing additional pipes. So we've got that uh, laid out there, and we'll do a couple more of those. So there's another. Oh, okay. We've got a uh, long stretch of pipe here that we want to uh, have another little um, another sump joining into. So if we actually want to join it into an existing or a pipe that we've already laid out. If we move close to a pipe, we get a different glyph. We get this little one with uh, two squares and a couple of lines going off on either side. What that means is um, break into this pipe at this point and put in another structure. So let's just click there. Escape. Okay, it's done that, but it's put in the wrong structure because I've got a, that uh, max pit still set up there. If I set that to um, uh, manholes, 
that would have put a manhole at that point, but that's no problem. We've just selected the structure, same as we did with the pipes before. Go swap part from the ribbon. And we can just choose whatever structure we want. So let's make that another 1050 manhole. And go OK. Alright. Pretty easy. Alright, and let's have another manhole or another sump over here, for instance, down down the road a bit. That's our sump, that's our pipe. Pop it in there and connect it into that manhole with a little manhole glyph. Okay, and it's just like well, clipping together Lego really. So all of these things, you can um, move them after the fact. Uh, for instance, this one in here that we've made. Just let your screens catch up. It all, it all recognises that these parts are connected together, so if you want to move them en masse, you don't need to select all the parts and move them. I can just select this uh, structure. It gets a little grip in the middle. Click on the grip, move that structure to where I want it, and all the pipes come with it. Okay, so it's very easy to make uh, edits in, in the plan view here, and also in the profile view, which we're going to do in a moment. Alright, now, as I say all the time in these webinars, um, first thing I do once I've laid out uh, objects in Civil 3D is look at them in 3D to make sure I haven't made a stuff up. So these are actually all being laid out as 3D elements. Uh, I'm just going to select all of those, right click and go select similar, great command. AutoCAD 2011 has just caught up with the Select Similar command. And I grab this wing wall down the end here. I think we should have got all of them. I also grab the surface. Go to my object viewer. Here's our surface. And I'll go have a look underneath it. Oh, we've got something interesting going on there. Oh, OK. You can see it's inserted all these structures as 3D objects. We've got our wing wall. Um, it's gone in at a crazy elevation, but we can adjust that very easily. So your screen should be catching up there and see a little bit what we're talking about. So these are all our um, 3D structures and pipes gone in underneath the surface. You can see the surface in grey above it there. And so we can quickly see that, well, yep, there is something we need to fix up the swing wall um, and we can fix that up very easily. We manipulate things in a vertical sense. Now I can grab that uh, wing wall and lift it up uh, from the profile. So let's go and generate a profile and we'll fix that one up. Okay, <coughs> so we can close this little toolbar now for laying out pipes. If we wanted to go and add some additional components to this particular network, the easiest way to do that is to, um, well, the easiest way in fact, used, used to be from uh, going to the tool space, right click on the name of the network and go edit. You can actually click on any of the pipes or structures now uh, and with the ribbon you can go edit pipe network and straight away it brings up that uh, toolbar we were using before and you can continue putting in pipes uh, and structures um, and it'll add them to the same network. As you can see up in the blue there it's the Storm 1 network which is the, the pipe I clicked on. So that makes it nice and easy. Okay, so we're going to make a profile. As well as civil, civil 3D profiles. Um, we need to start with an alignment. So from the alignment drop down in the ribbon here, <coughs> we get the option down here, create an alignment from network parts. This makes it easy. Select the first connected network par parts, it says down there on the command line. So if you wanted to, well, most people uh, in Australia and New Zealand like to see their profiles with the lowest part on the left going to the highest part on the right. Um, so we pick the lowest one first, which is going to be the starting point of our um, alignment. So I'm going to pick the wing wall here, and then it says select the next network part. Now you could go and select individually each network part, but you don't have to. The easier way is just to go to the top of where you want your alignment to finish, select on the structure up there, 
and it will trace through your um, trace through your network with the straight line between those two uh, components and figure out that's where you want your alignment to go. Once you've done that, hit enter and it asks you what your name wants to be, pipe and then the network name is fine. Um, alignment style, Sean's actually put us in here a ANZ pipe centerline style which is just uh, it might even be on no plot layer, I think. Um, don't typically want to see the uh, alignments that you made just to get a profile out of. And we don't want any labels to go with it. And leave this create profile and profile view ticked on. So go OK. We get a wizard here. It says uh, we're going to want to well, add the uh, surface into our profile. Draw and profile view. Uh, now we've got a profile view style here, there's a couple of ones made for the pipes, which is what we want. We've got a 10 times exaggeration, a 1 time exaggeration and a 5. Um, let's just run with a 5 times exaggeration for this, should be about right. Um, go next, station range automatic is fine, profile view height automatic is fine. Um, profile display is fine. Pipe network. So it's already picked up all those pipes that the alignment's running along. It's going to show all of those. You can untick any ones you don't want to see, but we want to see all of those. Go next. The data bands. <coughs> That's the other thing you need to uh, change from a road selection here to ANZ pipes. Once you've done that, you've got profile one and profile two. It's just the existing ground at the moment, which so is fine. But this one here is extra for the pipes, the data source. So which network you, if there's multiple networks in the drawing, that it's going to get its data from. We want Storm 1, so that's fine. We don't want hatch options, so we can just go create profile view. Make our profile up, well, let's put it here for now. Okay, we can see our, um, our wing wall disappearing down to probably zero elevation there, so we need to adjust that one a little bit. So to adjust it, quite simply, Select the grip there, or select the pipe I should say, and get some grips. Select the um, wing wall, we get some grips, I'm going to just put those two together. So we can move the whole thing, oh, I might have to move it in two guys. So I'm just going to grip edit that and drag the grips back up to near our surface. That's looking better. Okay. Now, the beauty of this is that as soon as I changed that to profile, if I went back to my model, I had a look at the actual um, the actual components in the three D model. It will have adjusted those at the elevations of all those uh, structures. Go to the object view. So that that wing wall is no longer disappearing down to zero elevation. It's been brought up just by adjusting the profiles. So that's how you adjust the uh, the heights or the structures and elements. So that makes it easy. So it's actually changing when you change the profile. It's changing the 3D model. Similarly, when you change the uh, plan view, it changes the 3D model. So what have we got here? Um, I might want to bring my pipe up to the surface a little bit there. That's not a bad spot to have it exiting out of there. Well actually you might want to shift it back a bit in terms of the triangulation of the terrain. So um, if we, if we don't, what we can do is uh, just go back to our plan view. Grab our wing wall. So again all I need to do is select that wing wall. I can drag it back to I think by the look of the triangulation we probably want to come somewhere in here. There's also a grip on that uh, on that wing wall, the circular one, and if I click anywhere, move that grip, it changes the direction the wing wall is facing, facing in. Most of the time you just want it facing straight out, so I'll leave it like that. The other thing I'm going to do is um, move this alignment we've generated 
move that back with the structure as well so that they coincide. All right, let's go and have a look on our profile and see how that's looking now. Profile's a bit better. Where's my wind wall gone? I think my alignment's gone back too far there. Yeah, it has. So I'm just going to take my alignment, snap it to there. Should be able to see our wing wall in the profile again now. Fingers crossed. There we go. Alright, you probably want to take that and uh, play around with the elevations a bit more. So take the bottom of the pipe up to there. And we've got a grip for the wing wall as well, so I can move that up a bit. So it coincides properly with where we want to get it to be. Okay, all right, <clears throat> and of course you backfill behind that or whatever you happen to be doing. All right, the um, bands down the bottom here for each of the pipes. We get the pipe grade, we get the name out of the pipe catalogue, so that's why we've put the full names there so that they, they come through correctly when you change your pipes um, to a different uh, pipe size and class, etc. Now you get a 3D length and a 2D length. We also get um, the sign level at the manhole centre line, uh, an invert level, so that there'll be your, your ground, uh, it's hard to tell on this one, but that's our, our wing wall, but, um, and the in, sorry, ground level and invert level. We get a cover, in this case it's negative because I've got that pipe coming out of the ground. They're all dynamic, so if I grab that pipe, push it underground, Oops. you can see the cover's changed to 1.3 metres now. Um, of course undo works on these things as well, because they're all AutoCAD objects. But I'll just whack this one back there for now. Oops, going on up a bit. There we go. Okay. So, uh, other things you want to see. If we look at one of these uh, uh, manholes that we've got, you can see there is a, hopefully your screen's catching up, there's a little grey circle in the middle there which represents where one of the other pipes from the sumps on the side of the road is joining into this manhole, so it shows where those connections are. Um, any of these things we want to adjust, we can, for instance, adjust the bottom of one of these sumps with the grips, move it down, make a big sump in there if we want to for some reason, perhaps we wanted to change the slope in this pipe so it's not so steep, and then we can grip edit that pipe as well. Let me just turn my object snaps off here, that's better. Simply select the pipes and grip edit them, I'll put that back up. And that again is changing the 3D model. Okay. Um, so that can all be changed and the previous pipe can be changed. If we wanted, for instance, the um, inverts of both pipes to be exactly the same at the manhole, this is the centre line of the manhole we're talking about here, we can grip edit them so that they both clip together at that point so the inverts are the same at the centre line if we want to. Um, we can also go select uh, any of these structures or pipes and go and go straight to the structure properties in this case. We have a, um, in the part properties here, we've got a little sump at the bottom there of 0.2. I can put that back to zero if I want it to be zero and go OK. And it will have just pulled that up. Um, so the actual sump, which is this point here, this the, that's showing the thickness of the bottom of the manhole there, which is the distance below that particular grip. Um, I set that to the invert level of the pipes with the sump of zero. Now what we might want to see is, and be able to adjust, is all the uh, services or the sumps on the side of this 
um, that join into the side of this uh, profile. In order to do that, you can select your profile view. Your profile view is the, the bands and the lines around uh, the grid around the outside. And from the uh, ribbon or in a right click, you can go to the profile view properties. And you can see under the pipe network tab here, it shows you all of the pipes and structures that are on that alignment that is put into this profile. It also shows you the ones here that are in grey that are not being shown. So if we wanted to see, for instance, the um, all the uh, 225 pipes joining into the side and the pits, the uh, sumps, show all of those and go OK. And now we can see those here. These, um, well all of these in fact, so it's showing the 225 pipe there and the, the, the sump off to the side. Of course the top of the sump won't coincide with the ground level at this point because it's not, it's on a, it's, it's offset to this alignment so that the ground drops away towards the side of the road so it's going to be lower over there, which is what we expect to see. And remember there's also a five times exaggeration in this particular profile view style, which is why everything looks a bit skinny. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, okay. Again, so if you wanted to, to adjust any of those, we can grab those pipes, make that one much steeper with a much bigger sump, or in fact the sump gets dragged up with it, unless you grab that and move the sump back down again, or adjust it manually, uh, numerically as we did before. What we can also do is uh, click on one of these, you can either right click and go apply rules, so to reapply the rules, and the, I think the only rules of these is the sump depth, so if I hit apply rules, it makes the sump depth back to, I think it's 700 mil, I think it was specified in the rules, whatever you specify in your, old, your own pipe rules. Um, those rules, if you're looking for them, they're the rules that are used as a first, first um, Civil 3D has a first go at setting out your pipes, how you might want to get them with the correct depths, etc. Correct uh, slopes that'll, that'll work reasonably. Um, you can see one here that it's, it's gone and decided that uh, it couldn't get the cover it wanted. So there's a cover, there's a, a depth, etc. that it works to. So it's dropped this manhole down a bit. Um, if you didn't want to do that, you could um, select that pipe and bring her up a bit and override those decisions that it's made for itself, override those rules and obviously we've probably reduced the the, uh, the cover at this point but that's the trade-off you would need to make. So it's had a first go um, and it does that according to the rules. Now if we go into the settings tab of the, the um, prospector here, uh, go, sorry, the settings tab of the tool space I should say, go into, let me see, uh, pipes, pipe rule sets, and we've got a couple of different ones here. This should be the spool and drainage one. Edit that. And these are the rules. There's a length check, there's a cover and slope, and there's a pipe to pipe match if you're not using um, if you're not using your um, if you're using null structures it uses that particular rule. Um, so you can go through and change these and reapply rules if you want to. You can also um, select one of your pipes, you can also get that option under the modify here, apply rules, and that can also be used to um, apply the rules to the entire network again if you wanted to. Okay, so that's been done. <coughs> what else would we like to see? Okay, that's our profiles. Profiles are how you manipulate things in um, in a vertical sense for your pipe network, in a horizontal sense you go into the plan view and change things around. What we do need to do though, if we come and have a look in the um, bands here down the bottom, there's a chainage number there and it's just got a bunch of question marks in it. Basically there's no, when we made this pipe network there was no alignment uh, assigned to it and it's looking for an alignment to work out the chainage. So a simple way to do that is to go over to our um, prospector tab, 
go over to our pipe network, expand out the network, store my network, and it's actually looking for the structures. So if I click on the structures here, we get all our structures listed in the, the list pane down the bottom. If I scroll over a wee bit, we've got here a column for reference alignment. So it's got no current reference alignment from which to work out that particular change. Now, the way to uh, fill those in, click the top one, shift select so you grab all of them. Right click on reference alignment, go edit, and tell it which edit. So it's this pipe storm one alignment that we made that we want to put into all of those. Click OK. Give it a second to think about it, and it fills it all out. Now, that is something that was been asked for for a long time by one of our clients. Um, so I went and had a talk to Autodesk, um, asked them to fix it, and hey, what do you know? 2011, it's fixed. You had to previously go through and do each each little structure one by one, which is pain to have to fill in like that. Um, so, yep, the system does work. We do talk to Autodesk, and we can make things happen. So that's that's great. You know, our plan comes together. So now that we've thrown in all those reference alignments, if we go and have a look, it's starting to fill out these change figures for each of the structures, which is what we want. We've also got the cover here for um, each of the pipes that are joining into that structure. And again, it's all fully dynamic. So if you change one of them, for instance, if I grab that one and drag it down to here, it stretches the structure down as well. And you can see that straight away, you've got two meters cover on one side and 0.57 on the other. So that's, that's exactly what it should be doing. Okay, all dynamic, all. all easy to adjust. Right, profiles, that's looking pretty good. What I'd like to look at is um, what happens if you have a crossing pipe, for instance, and you want to be able to show that on your profile as well. Perhaps uh, the same, either the same network as this one, or perhaps a different one. So let's go, let's go and make a different network so we can, and we'll uh, also have a look at the um, application of the um, Called interference checks or the clash detection. All right, so let me go and once again, as we did before, the pipe network, pipe network creation tools, and we'll call this one crossing network, just to make it easy to tell. Um, again, the, net, the ANZ parts list, the surface it wants to read references, e.g., with road. I uh, don't want an alignment on this one, and we'll just put the, again, the pit name and the pipe name for the structures and the pipes. Okay, that's all we need. Go OK in a moment. Here we go. We get the same toolbar up, but we it's now set from the little blue label at the top there that's making the crossing network. In this case, I'm going to use, um, well, in fact, they're not going to be concrete pipes at all. Let's say it's a PVC pipe, a 65 millimeter PN9, just for the, because we can. And I'm actually going to leave these structures set on null structures. Um, or, in fact, what we're going to do is lay out pipes only, so it uses the null structures anyhow. And let's make a, um, a pipe that runs from here, or a few pipes, should we say. 65 millimeter pipes, so they look pretty small. What you can do, pipes don't necessarily have to be straight as you look at them in plan view. Um, down the command line, you can type C, enter to make it curved. Make it say curved pipe out to here. And then back to a, uh, Align, L, Enter, and go back to making a linear pipe. Enter to finish those. Um, those curved pipes, a uh, thing to note, they curve in plan view, but they will be straight in profile view. So in, in side on view, um, it doesn't have to, yeah, you won't get a, a curve in, in, in the vertical sense, if you like, just, just horizontally. Okay, so that being done, We've got another little network here. Go back to my profile view. 
select my profile view by the bands or the, the grid around it. Right click and go to the profile view properties, we'll do the same thing from the ribbon. And now in that pipe networks tab at the end there, you've got the option to show parts of that other network um, in your profile as well. So in my case I'm going to, well we only need, well let's turn all, all of them just to see where they are. Go OK. And here they are down here. Now they show a bit interestingly to begin with. Oh, shouldn't have that gap in there. Of course if these are being shown in profile view I can grab those two for instance and grip edit them so that they connect together a bit better there at that point. That's better. So I can grip it up and change another network um, through the same profile. But they're just being projected onto this uh, horizontally to wherever this alignment happens to be, which is why they look at uh, well they're coming out as, as straight line pipes instead of a crossing style, which might which is what we actually want to see, which is like an ellipse. Um, so what we can do is go back into that pro those profile view properties, yeah, profile view properties, and the one we actually want to see is this last one here, P38, I can tell that from the, uh, the labels in the plan view, easy enough. So I'm going to untick the other two for now, but what I want to do is you can see this last column over here, which is style override. So currently the style is the ANZ standard pipe style, which is the same as all the other pipes that are being displayed on here with the blue lines for the inner and the outer wall. We want to put on an override style, so I'm going to tick on here, the override tick box, and select ANZ crossing service and profile showing the cross section only. Go OK and OK. And that, you can see where it's gone, here it is, just puts our little um, ellipse into place where it should be underneath that, uh, that large pipe that we've placed in there. So if that's too close obviously you can, or if you think that's too close, you can grip it at your large pipe, whether you put it above further, a little bit further or below. Um, you can just obviously grip it at that pipe. The grip in the middle of the pipe just moves the whole thing up and down a little bit, or as far as you want, without changing the grade. But um, what might be more, you know, it's obviously going to be a pain if you have to do this with all of your networks to try and find out where they are and um, if they're going to clash or not. So we can use a clash detection or an interference check uh, to do that, which is the next thing we're going to do in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, Obviously um, any pipes that you do want to show on your profile specifically, you do in this way and, and override the style so you get your little ellipses in the correct locations on your profile so the contractor knows uh, where they want to uh, or where they're going to find those pipes and to look out for them. All right, um, interference check. Let's go and have a look at that. So we go back to plan view here for a moment. <coughs> From the tool space over here, you can see under in the prospector tab we've got under pipe networks, we've got the networks, expand that out, we've got the pipes and the structures for that network, we've got the next network, but we've also got below that interference checks. So I right click on that and go create interference check. It asks me to select a part from the first network, so it can be any, anywhere, so I can select just one component of that network and select another part from the same network if you want to do an interference check with itself or from a different network, so I'm going to go up here somewhere, doesn't, just to show you that it doesn't have to be the correct location and just pick, pick another part from another network. Um, so here it's just asking you what you want to see in the styles, but that's fine usually just to leave that how it is. The one button you do want to see, I'll just let your screen catch up here, is the one down the bottom, 3D proximity check criteria. You want to tick that on, and this is so that you can specify a distance that you want to say, show me any pipes that are within X distance from each other, 
not actually, they don't actually have to be physically clashing one through the middle of each other to, to show up. So let's do a proximity check of say 0.5 of a meter. I think that should find that one. Go OK, and then OK to run the, uh, the interference check. Goes away and thinks about it. It's just comparing each pipe from each network. And it tells us that the number of interferences found is one. Okay, so from over in the um, tool space here, the prospector, we can expand out interference checks, and we've got one interference check that's been run. Here it is, and it's found one clash between these two pipes, and it's actually got a location as well. Easiest way to find it: is just right-click on that uh, that line, and go zoom to takes you straight to that um, where the, uh, the interference check has found the, the clash and this little green circle in here is actually the marker that shows you it. Um, so we want to go and have a look at what's going on there. So let me just select that pipe and the crossing pipe. You might, for completeness sake, want to see the structures at either end as well so we can see what's going on. And I'm actually going to pick that little interference solid as well so we can have a look at that. Go into the object viewer and here are our structures. There's our little 65mm pipe crossing us here. And the green blob is the interference check. So obviously we've got an issue there and it needs resolving. Obviously, if there's more than one of these in the in the pipe networks you've selected, it's going to find all of them, and you'll be able to zoom to each one of those and, and uh, sort out what the problem is. Obviously, you change the level of one other of the pipes, run the interference check again, and um, hopefully at that particular point we won't get any any more interferences being found, and it'll tell you so, and then you know you're good. Okay, um, last thing. Well, once you've done with that, you can delete or rerun the interference check um, once you've changed your pipes and um, just rerun it and uh, it'll apply the same criteria and then it'll tell you whether it's still got an interference or whether you've given enough clearance. Okay, last thing we wanted to look at then is what do we do in preparation for next week to take this network we've created and be able to export it to the Autodesk Storm and Sanitary Analysis package. It's quite simply just a land XML export. So for those who haven't done one of those before, we go to the output tab in the ribbon. In the middle here is export to land XML. Click on that. And we can actually just export everything if we want to. And uh, SSA Storm and Sanitary Analysis will just grab the bits it needs to. So let's do that. Let's just export everything. Go OK. I'm just going to drop it on my desktop for now. Give it a name. Drawing one XML will do for now. Me. Save it. And it's as easy as that. Let me just give you a quick preview of, of next week. So let me close that down. Go back to my um, desktop for a second. Start up Storm and Sanitary Analysis. should see on screen in a moment, hopefully, your, your, your screen is still catching up by the look of that, okay just give it a second to catch up, okay I think you've caught up now, so this is what it looks like very simply, um, from file, import, a land XML file, so drawing one XML, open that one, and it brings in, in fact it's brought in both pipe networks here, we don't necessarily need both of them, we could delete one of them out of the land XML, only export um, one of them, or uh, that would probably be the best way to do it, but in any case, uh, if I zoom into one of these, we can see if I double click on one of these links, brings through the information, this is what it's brought from, from Soil 3D, it's got the diameter, 
So if it's a, and the description, so it's a 225 nominal ball rubbering jointed pipe. Um, its diameter, the actual numeric diam diameter in centimetres here, but it's um, 222 millimetres for internal diameter. It's got its length, it's got its uh, elevations, and it's got its location in, in space as well. Um, so all that stuff comes through and we can start working with that information um, and doing an analysis. It also re recognises it as a circular pipe. Similarly with the structures, double click on one of those and it knows, it tells us it's some axe pit so we can um, do whatever needs to be done in there to um, provide the input to, um, to represent that as a sum. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at next Thursday. Let me just go back to the PowerPoint for a second. I've done the demo. And that's the end of our webcast for this week. So tune in on, on Thursday. We can have a look at that storm and sanitary analysis. Uh, it's a bit of a starter anyway. Um, we've only got an hour, so you know, we can only just make a start on it, just with the basics. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll hopefully see you there.